There are three things that sustain life on Earth. One is the one-way flow of energy. We get energy from the sunlight in, in the form of radiation. The second is the cycling of matter and nutrients, and we'll get into the biogeochemical cycles in a later unit. And then the thing that drives these cycles of matter is gravity. What we're going to look at today are the matter and energy laws. The first one, the law of conservation of matter, says that matter cannot be created or destroyed. It can change forms. We can take those elements and atoms and rearrange to form new substances, but the same amount of matter we start with is always going to equal the matter that we end with. So what that means is there is no away. We can't throw things away. They end up in a landfill or we incinerate them. They end up in the air, but we cannot destroy matter. Before we look at our energy laws, let's kind of give an overview of what energy is. It's the capacity to do work and transfer heat. Some of the types of energy we'll refer to are light, heat, electricity, chemical, mechanical, and nuclear. When energy is passed uh, through the food chain from one organism to the next, it's stored in the bonds of organic molecules. Plants produce glucose through photosynthesis, converting solar energy into chemical energy. The quality of energy describes its ability to do useful work. If it's high energy quality, it's concentrated enough that we can convert it into electricity. Um, examples would be coal or gas. Low energy quality means it has very little ability to do work. It's more disorganized, more dispersed. Heat would be the best example of low energy quality. Just like matter, uh, the first law of thermodynamics says that energy cannot be created or destroyed. So whatever energy is input into the system is going to be equal to the amount of energy after. So energy can be transformed, but it can only change forms. It cannot be created or destroyed. So if we look at the process of photosynthesis through the first law of thermodynamics, we see that energy enters our system as light energy. It's converted into glucose. When the zebra eats the plant, uh, that glucose is consumed by the zebra. And then the lion eats the zebra and so on. It's passed along as food. No new energy is created. We're taking that solar energy and just converting it into a form that the other organisms can use. So with photosynthesis, which is a system, one of our inputs is light energy. We take that light energy and we transform it into chemical energy in the form of glucose, and then we lose some of that energy as heat. We say that we lose it because it escapes the system, but we don't destroy the energy. The second law of thermodynamics says that when energy is converted to one form or another, it's usually degraded to a lower quality. And that's what we see when we convert energy from one form to another, we're always losing some as heat. And heat cannot be recycled or reused. Energy is not like matter um, that you can continually use it over and over because it is degraded each time. So if we look at our same food chain in terms of the second law of thermodynamics, as energy is passed from one level of the food chain to the next, we're losing heat at each of those levels. Plants generate heat through respiration. Um, the zebra, the lion, uh, generate heat through respiration. When your lion chases the zebra, they're both generating heat. So what's happening is that stored chemical energy, that glucose, is being changed into useful work and then the rest of that stored energy is either um, passed along the food chain or is lost from the food chain. So when we compare matter and energy, energy travels from the sun through the food webs and is lost as heat. So in our diagram, that's what we see as the red arrows. It's, it's degraded at each level. Matter, on the other hand, can circulate. Our nutrients are recycled and reused. Our decomposers in the food chain uh, cycle those nutrients back into the soil. And they eventually become parts of living things again when they're taken up by plants. And when we look at the nitrogen cycle, carbon cycle, oxygen, sulfur, phosphorus, we'll see how um, these types of matter are all recycled.
When we look at our matter and energy laws and relate it to our environmental problems, what we see, especially with our more economically developed countries, are high waste or what we call high throughput societies. That means that we have a lot of input into our systems, whether it's matter and energy, and we're producing a lot of outputs. So we're putting this matter and energy through each system. And what happens when we try to reach economic growth, we use more and more resources and eventually we will become unsustainable.